Well, here's a controversial question in the home industry, and that is, are wood foundations a good idea? As a realtor, occasionally we see a home that is built on a wood foundation. So is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Well, watch this video to the end and you'll have enough information to help you to make your own decision. Hi, and welcome to this video. I'm Bruce Boyce from Homes and Life with more information to help you understand homes, how to buy them, how to sell them, and how they're built. And again, many thanks to those who've watched these videos and have subscribed to my channel. When a home is being built, one of the crucial things is the foundation. You could say that it's foundational to the integrity of the home. Sorry, I, I had to say that. Mostly, we see foundations built with cement blocks or concrete foundations. Sometimes we see insulated concrete forms used for foundation. Now, I've done a video on insulated concrete forms and that link should show up above. But every now and then, we see a house built on a wood foundation. Again, the question arises, is this a good thing or is it a bad thing? Before I go into details, I will mention here that a wood foundation is a pressure-treated wood foundation where the wood has been treated to resist moisture. The whole idea of pressure-treated wood foundations has been around for many years. Canada started looking into this concept years ago, back in the 50s and 60s. They started building concept homes in the mid-60s I believe it was on military bases, and decided from the data that they compiled that it really was a viable construction system. Homes were being built with wood foundations by the late 60s and early 70s. The United States followed soon after. And overall, the results have been mostly favorable, with some exceptions that I'll mention later. When either building a home with a wood foundation or buying a home with a wood foundation, there's one very important detail to have. This is called an engineer's report. This report will verify that the wood foundation has been built according to the engineer's specifications. This helps remove concerns on how well the foundation was built and if it was built to engineer specifications that can affect the longevity of the foundation. There's been a number of studies done that suggest the life of a pressure-treated wood foundation could be as long as a concrete foundation, providing that it was built to the engineer's specifications. One of the crucial elements of a wood foundation is the gravel base. They should be built on a thick base of washed gravel to ensure that the foundation is not sitting in water. This base may drain to the outside if the house is on a hill or possibly to a sump. From the gravel up, the foundation wall is framed using pressure treated framing members and pressure treated sheathing. The engineer will determine if the wall needs to be framed with 2x6, 2x8, or 2x10s. And if they need to be framed at 16 inches or 12 inches or even 8 inch spacing to give the correct structural strength and resistance to any pressure from backfill. Any cuts in the wood need to be treated manually with preservative to ensure moisture resistance. Wherever the sheathing covers the framing and any joints in the sheathing will need to be caulked with specified caulking and the engineer may call for either galvanized or stainless steel nails to be used. The basement floor can maybe be made with either poured concrete or a wood frame floor again could be used but made from pressure treated wood. Another very important part of a wood foundation is the exterior. When moisture comes up against the wall, it must be directed down to the gravel at the base. The exterior of the foundation needs to be covered with a minimum of six mil polyethylene covering. 
This will in turn be sealed at the top with a treated plywood strip all around the perimeter of the foundation. When backfilling a wood foundation, a porous backfill should be used like sand or gravel and the backfill must have a definite slope away from the house to direct surface water away. The most reported problems with a wood foundation have been where the surface water was not directed away from the house. This is also a problem in concrete block and concrete foundations. And most problems with wood foundations can be traced back to incorrect construction or poor maintenance, which is pretty much the same in any kind of construction. Although the pressure treating is supposed to discourage insects, it would be wise to do your own research and inquire with the experts in your locale if insects like ants and termites are a problem. Also, when considering a pressure-treated wood foundation, keep in mind that there may be a lower resale value due to a lack of knowledge about wood foundations. Now, this is somewhat offset by a lower initial construction cost as wood foundations are less expensive to build. Because a properly built wood foundation is dry, homes with a wood foundation will have a warm, dry basement without that damp, musty smell that some concrete basements have. And in addition, a wood foundation can be built in more extreme weather conditions than a concrete basement can be. And if concrete is too expensive or not readily available, then a pressure treated wood foundation may be a good option. Well, I do hope this video has given you a better understanding of wood foundations and what to watch for. So what do you think? Are they a good idea or are they a bad idea? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. And if you've enjoyed this video, please click on the like and subscribe buttons. There's more videos to come. Remember, life is an adventure. And I'll talk to you again soon.